I'm Nick. I'm Chet. And you're listening to Explorers Radio. What are we doing? What are we going to talk about today, Nick? <laughs> uh, well, you know, there, there are a lot of people that, you know, are concerned about these uh, grown men that are, you know, prowling. Just prowling, prowling around the internet, prowling around the chat rooms, and we've kind of um, stumbled across some of those, you know, in in our uh, in our journeys. You know, We're here to talk about <laughs> predators, people. Yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's a sensitive topic, but um, you know. We, uh, we take it very seriously. Yeah, again, well, not again, but to just to go ahead and clarify for you know whoever's listening, for the small group, for the two or three people that are probably going to hear this, we are not here to make light. Uh, we are not here to make light of this topic. It's a very serious issue. It's something that does happen. It happens every day. It happens very often. And this isn't something we're not. We, we, we joke about things, and we make jokes um but uh we we do not this is not a good thing this is not okay we do not want this is not something that we you know we don't like that this happens um it's something that is sick it's twisted and people that do it should be uh punished severely severely uh, and it should be pursued to the fullest extent of the law and so we do not in any way um endorse or um, support this behavior with, you know, of such as the, such as what we're about to speak about. So let's just throw that out there. This is not okay. Any type of sexual abuse is not okay, never okay. And if you are a victim, it is not your fault. Yeah, I think you put that pretty well. So I'm not gonna just to, not gonna to elaborate that, on that. Whoever, yeah, just whoever here that hears this, it, it is, if you have been sexually abused as a as a child or a preteen or just at any age, uh, it's not your fault. And you know you can say, well, you put yourself in that situation. Uh, nobody asks to be sexually abused or taken advantage of. Um, you can always say no, uh, but obviously, you know, just I mean, through you know no, what the the subject matter of what we're about to talk about. A lot of the time, for, unfortunately, for a lot of people, no is not enough. Um, so again, just know it's not your fault, and there is help out there. There is healing, and there's redemption, and uh, this is not. Um, I don't want to say it's. On one hand, it's not necessarily something that you could have controlled because sexual abuse is somebody controlling you, unfortunately, and. Again, this is not something we're supporting, endorsing, or making a lot of. We are here mainly to talk about the Chris Hansen, um, the uh, Dateline NBC investigations, and to discuss those. Talk about, you know, what gets a person there? How does how does somebody go from, you know, how these these family men um, who have wives and kids of their own? How do you how did how how are they able to? make the conscious decision to at that point in time whenever the dateline investigations were going or actually happening how what got them why did they go to the chat room and seek out and not did not just stumble upon but 95 percent of these men sought out young girls and boys to take advantage of and uh take away their innocence how do you get there how do you how are you how are they okay with that how i mean how what what goes on in the mind of an individual that is okay with doing something like that? And that's mainly what we're here to talk about. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I think since, you know, like Chance said, since the internet became a thing and chat rooms became a thing, you have been seeing like an increasingly high amount of these older men specifically it is disproportionately men. You don't really see females doing this, but men, like Chance said, taking advantage of these these uh, underage kids. So basically, you know, people like Chris Hansen and others um, 
have established kind of shows based around capturing or um, kind of exposing these predators, these online predators, right? Right. And um, these shows, I mean, they've gained a lot of popularity throughout the years. And obviously Dateline NBC is like, it's like a household name. Everybody knows Chris Hansen and um, you know, all of his, his little, uh, his little witty, his little witty remarks. Yeah, he's got a. He also does uh, have a YouTube channel, a show called "Have a Seat with Chris Hansen," and he does the same thing. And he exposes these predators um, for the monsters that they are. Um, and again, these are normal. Seem well, no, they're not normal, but they are. These are seemingly normal individuals who are living among us, and you would not think twice uh, if you saw them just walking out on the street. You know, they have. You know the two, the wife, the two and a half kids, and you know, good life, happy. You know, they got a lot going for them. A lot of these men have jobs, uh, and and good jobs, careers, and they throw it all away when they decide to, as Chris Hansen puts it, uh, chat up these these um these kids. And what's interesting about it is that. You know, you see a lot of a lot of types of men. Um, they're all very manipulative, very manipulative. Because you have you have to you have to be if you're going to be you know uh, putting an impressionable child. If you're going to be putting yourself in that situation, putting in an impressionable into uh, you know young preteen or teenager or you know kid in that situation, and it's always the same excuse whenever they get caught. It's, uh, I thought I was coming here for a job interview or this is my friend's house or, you know, something like, well, they just told me, they w- they'll acknowledge that the, the, the age gap is there. And, well, they will say how, when asked, they'll say, well, the kid, they were said they're 13. And they'll say, well, they, they just told me to come on over, you know, or um, they were available and they just weren't doing anything. They drove three hours out of their way to Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, and we're just coming to hang out, watch football, or have some beer, uh, which, again, I mean, even having beer with a kid is, is illegal. Um, and that's just sick in and of itself. But, you know, there's there's a couple of, a couple of guys on there that came in naked and um, – yeah. That really surprised me, and they were okay with that. They would have been because you can tell on the vid- on the footage. I mean, it's there. We have the visual. They walk in like a, like they own the place. And what's interesting about that is is and, and again they said this in the show, but they've either done it before or they've chatted online with this individual so much, so frequently, and gotten so in depth. And I hate to use this word intimate because using could to be intimate with a young, you know person at that age is sick but they've gotten intimate with them and they feel comfortable they either feel comfortable enough to do that or they've done it before and i think i think most of the time it's uh it's reasonable to say that the latter is true that they've they've done this before um especially in the case of john Kennelly. um <laughs> and, and i'm not i don't i don't you know, I'm okay with bringing up names here because, I mean, again, these guys, you know, I mean, some of these guys, I mean, you could be, if you're on the sex sex offender registry, you, I mean, your name's got to be put out there, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody, again, everybody, even the predators, there's healing for them, there's redemption, and, and, and you know, for them too. They can, they can, they can move on, but it's still their name. They people have to know, like, you know, that's a consequence of something like this. And whenever you get to that point of, you know, you decide, well, I know that I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm I've been uh, rehabilitated and whatnot. Um, I mean, people, it's just hard. I mean, you have to put yourself in another person's shoes. I mean, they don't they don't know what you the journey that you've taken and that you're not going to do it again because. You know, a lot of people just go ahead and say, once an offender, always an offender. And I think there is some truth to that. 
but I don't think it's com I don't think that's completely true. Uh, it is possible to to heal from this and to become a better person, a better individual, get a, a, a product to go from this to a a true productive member of society. But it is a long and hard road back to back home. Um, and a lot of them, I would say most of them don't make it. Uh, I mean, I don't know the, I'm not as well read on the stats for that, but uh, based on what I've seen and what I have researched, uh, most of the time rehabilitation is uh, short lived, unfortunately. And that could mean relative, that's relatively speaking for some, maybe five, maybe three, maybe 10 years. But at some point, a lot of these guys do tend to, it seems they, they, you know, it's like it's like with cigarettes or drinking or, or whatever. You know, you you do it again and you're just you're back on your kick. You know, and it's it really is sad because here's what you have to remember: with people like this, I mean, people people there's not a bunch there's no really no empathy mostly uh, for these these guys, but I don't think it's bad to to in some way feel bad for them too in that not feel bad that they got caught uh they should have been caught and they should again be pursued to the fullest extent of the law but a lot of these people that do these kinds of things have been sexually abused themselves at one point in their life and that's sad it really is sad and you know just because they've done what they've done with this person does not mean that the pain in their life is insignificant or doesn't matter because it does um but it matters seemingly less now that you have put yourself in a situation where you are willing to put that uh to inflict that pain uh onto someone someone else that doesn't deserve it just like they didn't deserve it um that doesn't make it okay for them to do what they did no excuse for it you know again uh you know gavel's got to come down on these guys and there should not be much uh mercy at all because this is you got to think about this this is not just something that affects the individual the kid it i mean it fit it affects families and when things like this are found out i mean it really it can tear families apart um now i mean families stick together but i'm just saying tear them apart is in uh just ruin lives i mean you you I mean just be, for the what you wanted to do and have that pleasure for yourself you've caused I mean, this is something that that kid's going to have to live with for the rest of their life. And they're going to wonder, why did they do that to me? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do wrong? It, was it my fault? Like, what, what could I have done differently? And the answer is that they could have done nothing differently because they didn't, they didn't, they're impressionable. They're, they're not developed enough to be able to make those smart calls, those calls of an adult to be able to say, hmm, this is a bad situation. This guy's trying to get at me and get me to do something that I know is not appropriate, you know, and he's going to hurt me, you know, and he may not hurt me physically, but he's going to hurt me emotionally, mentally. Um, and a lot of the time they do hurt them physically. You know, remember that one guy that had a, he had a paddle and some, some uh, rope or whatever. And he, he sat yeah. in the chair and he just, they, they cower down when Chris Hansen confronts them. It's just amazing. These guys, the demeanors that they just completely go from like this, casual just strolling in like they own the place you know it's like just have some cookies and milk and then they cower down to a little puppy dog it really is i mean it, it is I, I can't i don't ever want to imagine i don't want i don't want to know what it feels like to be in that spot <clears throat> i really don't yeah me neither that's uh <coughs> gotta be just like absolutely i mean obviously it's traumatizing for the individual that was harmed, but imagine being the predator and just like feeling just everything rushing, finally feeling a sense of guilt and having to like face it versus like ignore it. Because I'm sure a lot of these guys do feel guilty. <clears throat> I, I don't think that they're so, so far removed from like society that they're like, you know, not feeling any sort of remorse but obviously the, their desire, you know, is just so strong that they just, they just turn off any sort of, uh, you know, social cues or limitations that other people would always have on, you know, that they don't question that sort of thing. 
I think, um, not to cut you off, but I think that, that you have to question, are they sorry that they got caught or are they actually sorry that they did it and yeah. sorry that they were going to literally ruin another person's life? Um, that's, that's where th- I think at that point, that's the first step to, you know, to t- truly feel remorseful. Like I have, it was, go- I was going to call where I have for people that the guys that have done it, I've caused this person such pain, uh, uh, that they will now live the rest of their lives having to heal from this and deal with this. And it's going to affect their relationships. It's going to affect their families. It's going to affect them, uh, going to affect their uh their their growth uh emotionally spiritually mentally uh, it's going to affect them in every way uh i mean especially f- uh, physically because a lot of the time too what people don't a lot of people don't think about this but children you know depending on what age um you know you can trigger uh puberty through um through doing that and you know i've heard the stories where these seven eight year old girls get pregnant um and it's it's absolutely horrible it's sick and um i mean things such as this are i mean you you know this is the kind of stuff that you you read about and you I mean, I've never been on the deep web before, but I've heard enough about it to where there's, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you, you hear about it and you, you can't imagine that this can't possibly be happening, but it's happening on such a large scale that, I mean, the government, I mean, they're not even able to track a lot of these guys out there because they're so undercover. They're so, you know, they call it the deep web. I mean, it really is a deep web. I mean, they are so like locked under layers and layers and layers and layers of, of proxy servers, anon- anonymity. Um, you know, I mean, it just all these these things um, that you know keep them from truly getting caught. It's, I mean, it just breaks your heart. It really does, and you. you it makes you want to get up. If you don't feel like you want to get up out of your seat and do something about it in that moment, um, you know, I mean, you just, you gotta, you really got to think about this, you know, because this is something that everybody, I think everybody can contribute to this in some way. Um, this is one of those things where it at least, you know, um, to raise awareness, like, like what we're doing right now, something, um, and it's it's just one of those things where, again, you don't really understand. It's hard to see it from the pre- the predator's perspective, but it's also hard to see it from the victim's perspective if you've never been on either side. Um, and uh, you know, you know, it just it's it's astonishing the the numbers of people that 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 have, they they have been sexually abused. Um, and versus those who have sexually abused <coughs> others. Um, you just have to, you have to think about what, again, what, what, do, I mean, Nick, what do you think gets a person to that, to that place where they're um, actually pursuing, uh, pursuing uh, doing something like that to somebody? How do you think they get there? I have no idea. Yeah, I've I've thought about that before. But, you know, they have so many movies on this sort of thing. Um, it's hard to study, but, you know, there's just some sort of argument, you know, between nature and nurture going on where – On one hand, maybe something traumatizing happened to these men, you know, deeply impactful from a young age and caused them to kind of become rewired, you know, to think like that, to think that this sort of thing is okay. Or if they don't think it's okay, to still actually make them act on it. And then on the other hand, 
you have the type of guys that maybe this is just how they are. And they were always like this. You know what I mean? Or if they weren't always like this, it was always something that was kind of, uh, you know, deep in their personality and waiting to be exposed. You know, once they reach a certain age, yeah. it kind of begins to show little signs here and there. Um, so I don't really know which of those is kind of like the dominating force here. And uh, I don't know if it really matters. I mean, maybe, maybe some, one of those sides is offered more like empathy, but it's just either way it's sick. I mean, it's like, like a wrong act is a wrong act. You know what I mean? It's just like, right. just, it's hard to have any, you know, sympathy. And and the thing is, whenever you hurt somebody, it doesn't matter if you meant to or not. You hurt them. You don't get to tell someone that's hurt, well, I didn't mean to, or you shouldn't feel hurt. Um, they're hurt. And you can't undo that. You can apologize. You can change your actions and change how you feel. But that's the fact that it's it's been done will always be there. And it's a scar. And scars can heal over time, but it's, a scar is a scar, and scars stay. That's why it's called a scar. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Um, but, yeah, if you haven't, you know, if anybody's listening to this and you haven't checked out the show, you know, you can find... Uh, to catch a predator i mean that's really the original that kind of started all this you can find that on youtube you know all the old episodes and stuff and yeah i don't think they air it anymore um i don't even think they do reruns yeah i think you're right i don't i haven't seen or heard of any i think it used to come on abc maybe back in the day but no one really has cable nowadays so um yeah it's kind of like a comedic take on it it takes it very seriously it does it, it is lot. they are you can tell there's a little of making fun and poking fun at the, at the topic which i mean it's not in a way where it's you know saying you know look at this kid isn't this funny what would have happened it's not that at all it, it it's it's the humor is in them getting caught and how they yeah. how chris Hansen reacts to them how he, they react um, and <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's not every, it was never supposed to be, it, it wasn't, um, a comedic take on that, on that type of behavior. Um, it is funny because the re the reason that it's funny is because it's, again, what is happening to what they're doing is not funny, but how they react and what they say and how embarrassed they are uh what they do in response to chris hansen is in response to them getting caught that's where the humor is in that show um you know i would argue that you know there they could have definitely i think there were a couple situations where you know they this the the show could have handled things a little bit differently Here's something else I want to throw out there real quick, and this may be a popular, uh, unpopular opinion, but I truly believe that what can also contribute to this um, is pornography. And the reason I say that is because what happens when 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 you watch pornography, it can it, if you watch it long enough, and you you know you can it can change your brain physically. Um, and uh, it, it, you know, the dopamine receptors in your brain, um, or you know where you release it, it's just, it's when you 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 watch it and you 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 know, I mean, why do we watch pornography? We all know why we watch pornography. And when you do that, you're giving yourself a reward for nothing, um, and that changes how uh, you you um, it changes your brain, and you get to a point where what you're seeing is not enough and you keep wanting more and more and more. 
And for a lot of people that can become, uh, you know, getting to a point where you, you just, this is you fulfilling your fantasies and, you know, they say on there, well, this is just a fantasy. This is just, you know, and the, the thing is, and Chris Hansen said this and he was right. It became reality whenever you uh, came and showed up. And um, yeah. they say it was a, he said, role play chat room, dude. No, it wasn't a role play chat room. You knew you were talking to under under, under what well, you, who you thought was an underage kid and you kept going. There was no conversation about role play. Um, even, and here's the thing that even just think, I mean, dude, you know, that's still sick. If you're, if it's role play, I mean, that's just, that's, that is still almost just as bad because you're, I mean, that's, I don't know who in their right mind would want to role play with a man that's wanting to talk like that to a 14 year old. I mean, that, I mean, that is just sick. So that, I mean, they, they think that's okay, which it's not okay, but I'm, I guess you can't really get pressed by the law with that. If you both agree, this is role play chat room. Okay. We start now. That is just, that's still disgusting. Yeah, it, it is definitely. But I think there is a point when that line doesn't work because if the ages are defined before the role play happens and both parties know, <clears throat> excuse me, both parties know about each other's ages, then there is no role play. Like you can't, you can't, um, you know, unknow someone's age and make that okay, uh, I guess, retroactively. Like the old man that's chatting up this, you know, 15, 14 year old person, if he knows that that person's 14, 15, and then starts to role play, it's still illegal from my understanding. Yeah, well, I'm just talking about two people that are adults and then they role play as they're younger. Like one of them's younger, one of them's adult. That's still sick. Oh, oh, okay, okay, my bad. Sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't get that. Yeah, I'm talking about role play as in a man role playing it with a grown woman that's acting like a kid. I don't know what woman would be okay with that. No, I don't. <laughs> hey, Block, listen. delete, ignore, goodbye. Yeah. That's right, man. Report, block, delete. Done. You know? Just <laughs> I mean, really. That's it's it's bad. Yeah. But um Yeah, I mean these these things are uh obviously serious, you know, we've talked about that. But uh if you want to laugh and you want to kind of feel a bit of relief knowing that the good guy always kind of comes out on top, then that's actually a good show because these predators, the only episodes they air are the ones where the predators get caught. So you know that every episode is going to have a good ending, you know, in the sense that no kids were harmed. You know, it's a, it's a decoy. That's not even a real underage person that, uh, correct. This is an adult playing as a, as a child. Yeah. So no one, you know, there's no one getting harmed. The uh, partner with a, a sting, um, I don't even know what you call them, like tetrad core. What are these? <laughs> what are these? Um, Perverted Justice was the one they originally used, and the tetrad core was the, was, the, was the group that they used for Hanson versus Predator when they brought it back for a brief period. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they basically partner with these organizations that help to learn these guys. And, uh, you Which know, is great. Yeah. It works well. I mean, at least from the show, the show standpoint. Um, and uh, there's some of these spinoffs, and I don't know if you've seen any of them, but uh, there's a guy named Cassidy Campbell. And uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but he has his own spinoff. And it's actually pretty popular on YouTube. I don't know. Have you seen it before? I, I feel like I've run across it. Yeah. I mean, it's the same concept. It doesn't look quite as professional, but they get these guys in there and there's like, it's like Russian bodyguard meets predator, you know, uh, football dad, 
you know, screams at Predator, like all this just crazy stuff. You just guys get exposed and then get arrested, um, just like in the To Catch a Predator show. I mean, it's really crazy stuff. I mean, it is crazy. It's just, it's, it's sick. Yeah. Definitely is. But you got to love it. <laughs> I love it, man. You got to love the show. You got to love the show. I love Chris Hansen, you know, besides his whole uh, tax fraud, you know, getting arrested or <laughs> this guy. I didn't want to talk about that. Yeah. That was sad. He's supposed he, to be. He, he, I mean, I, you know, that was, that was something else, man. Yeah, it was. But it's it's just I mean, you know, you really got to just I mean you you feel it's just I I just don't know what to say about it. I mean you really don't know. There's nothing to say. I mean it's just it's sad. It's sick. And and you know for people out there that are going through this, I mean again there's help and there's uh um. There's there's healing, and you can you can get mo- you can move past this, and uh, it is I mean there's hope there's always hope, and you're not you're not damaged goods, um, you know you're you're a person with value, with excuse me, person that doesn't deserve that even if you know you feel like you do you don't, and um, it's never okay. It's never something that people want to face either. And people have to face it in their own time in their own way. Uh, but it's very uncomfortable. And you, know, you just know that, uh, again, you know, if you feel, if you feel like you have been sexually abused, um, there are definitely, there, there are resources for you. And you can reach out to those. One of them is um, is a the uh, National Sexual Assault Hotline, and the number is one eight hundred six five six four six seven three. One eight hundred six five six four six seven three, and they are available twenty four hours a day. Um, and you can chat online or over the phone, uh, and have. Uh, at least take the first step to, to talking to somebody or telling someone because that's the hardest thing is to tell somebody because everybody uh, it's hard to tell to talk about that and the, again the first step is knowing that um, that it's okay to talk about it and, and that there's nothing wrong with with you because this has happened to you um, again the first step in healing is, is recognizing that it's okay to talk about it you need to talk about it Get it out in the open. Get it out in the light, and uh, um, you know, get get help because it's there, and there's no shame in that at all. And you, there's no reason to be ashamed for uh, if this has happened to you. You still have value and worth. Um, you are you are loved by God, and this is not something that has uh, uh, tainted you from being loved uh, truly or uh, made you unworthy because it hasn't yeah i'm just going to echo those thoughts we can link a couple resources in the description uh, I, this is on youtube or instagram we'll put a couple uh links you know mention that number that hotline number that chance mentioned in the description of this uh video and uh just in case you didn't didn't get it and uh yeah feel free to use those as you see fit but we appreciate you joining us for another episode and we look forward to having you on a note on our next one hopefully you'll uh you'll join us Until then. Until then.